So let's go ahead and do a mounting using the Zebra's John Motion Analyzer data. We're back in our dental DB, and when you're setting up this case, the critical thing is right here in the middle, down at the bottom, you're going to need to sit where it says scan bite fork for John Motion import. You want to go ahead and select that. Once that's done, you're going to go up here to your design like normal and hit design. And it's very important you pay attention because loading of the uh, scans is a little different when you have the bite fork. So you're going to see in the upper left here where it says load upper, just as normal. So you're going to go to load your upper and load a pre-op upper. And then it says upper jaw load bite movement. Now they're actually referring to the bite fork. It's just one of those funky nomenclature things in ExoCAD. So we've loaded that. Now we're back here, load lower. So here's our lower. And it's going to give you this sort of a gobbledygook mess. And what you're going to want to do is I'm just right clicking and I'm rolling this into position, I'm zooming with the mouse. Now both hold right and left and you can pan it. So you want to orient these models at approximately the same direction. Again, I'm just right clicking and I'm orienting this and zooming a little bit. And you're going to pick a point on the floating mesh here, which is here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Click and click. And we've got a really good alignment. See everything's green on both sides. So we almost have a perfect alignment of the model with into the bite fork that we scanned from the patient. Hit next. You're going to have to pick your uh, bite fork that you use. We happen to use the UN. Remember when we were doing the zebra, she had choices. So select that. And again, what you're going to want to do, now I'm going to right click and I'm going to roll this so I'm in about the same position as the upper green one. So I'm going to zoom in and let's pick this spot right here. That's a very defined spot. And let's pick this spot on the other mesh. And again, look, we have a very nice alignment, green all around. So we're going to accept that one. Next. And now we're just going to do our basic uh, orient the model. So red is down, hit next. And then as always, we want to look at the side here. And we're going to see that we're going to have the interferences when we go to first contact. So you're going to want to go up to expert mode. Now, the bite fork is here. You want to turn it off when you're trimming your mesh. I, all I did is I came up here to hide show and you can turn your bite fork on or off. You want it off and we'll get rid of the lower and uh, edit mesh. There we go. And now you're going to want to turn off the bite fork. Let's just trim this. Leave your palette. And we still have some excess material that's hanging down. And then X to get rid of that. N to bring in your lower right. Mouse click to pick, roll. Double click to move and pan. And then same thing, we're just going to just trim off this little bit of excess. And that's pretty good. So we'll accept that and let's go back to the wizard. And now when we take a look, we can see we have no tissue interferences when we uh, close to first contact. Next. And now uh, we're going to start our virtual articulator. And it's a little different because we're going to go ahead and articulate the jaw. We're going to go ahead and just close this leave a gap and this is where you come up here and it says load digital face bow data and we know it's in here I'm going to double click and it's okay to leave a gap and let's bring back in our models and there you are hinge axis mounting and uh, let's go ahead and just finish up getting the first contact. So you're going to pick your flat articulator, leave the gap, sagittal view, zoom in, and down here, opening and closing of the pin, we're going to start closing, raising our pin, watching it closely until it lifts off the platform, which means we're at first contact. And there it goes. Okay, you see it right here, it just lifted start your simulation hit ok yes we want to keep the new bite let's look at it from this angle and we want to show distance and we want to look at first contact and turn off dynamic and lo and behold there's our first contact 
So there we are. First contact with a hinge axis mounted set of models. And now you can do your diagnosis, final waxing, whatever you need to do from here. And I would recommend saving this. So click, right click, save scene as, and let's call this Zebras mounting. Zebras first contact. And that's how you do a zebra's mounting. So we've done our zebra's alignment using our digital hinge axis. And now let's take a peek at what we have here. So we have our upper model aligned in the articulator with our lower model. Let's just remove the articulator and bring in Sandra's photo. You can see that our photo is aligned perfectly with the grid. Remember we took that with a plumb bob. Put our bite fork in and let's turn it off there. We have a perfect alignment on our zebra's bite fork. So I would say we have a very accurate digital representation of our patient. And moving forward, we could feel confident that we have a good articulation and that our diagnostic process and waxing process and establishing a good functional occlusion would be successful. Hello, Dr. Brian Mills. I'd like to introduce you to our wonderful ExoCAD teaching facility in Cupertino, California, where we teach a hands-on ExoCAD class for the restorative dentist. So if you'd like further information on ExoCAD for the restorative dentist, go to CalDentalArts.com and look at the events page for upcoming classes. Take care.